G'day, it's Pete here and I'm back for all the action from the World Bridge series. And today we're looking at the quarterfinals of the mixed teams and the semifinals of the seniors team. So let's jump in and take a look at all the action. So to kick things off, uh, we're jumping into the mixed teams. We're looking at a the first stanza between Firm versus Bridge 24. And uh, we've got this interesting hand where North has this really powerful hand. I've got 20 points with six clubs and five diamonds. Now there's a range of questions that you have to answer when trying to bid this North hand. Uh, so the first question is, do you open this hand two clubs? So you've got 20 points, you've got a six, five shape. Do you open two clubs strong or do you open uh, one club? Now, I like the one club opening. If you open this sort of hand two clubs, two suited hands are really, really awkward to try and bid because think about how the auction would pan out. You'd open two clubs, partner would bid two diamonds, you'd bid three clubs, they bid like three of a major. Do you ever show your diamonds? Not really. So here, if you start with one club, you might not be able to totally express that you got 20 points, you'll be able to come close, but you'll definitely be able to show your six, five most of the time. You'll bid one club, two diamonds, which is a reverse, then repeat your diamonds and you'll be in a good stead. Now here the auction didn't quite go to, to plan for firm. So they open one club and they get a takeout double and it goes pass and uh, there's a one diamond bid. So what do you do now? The opponents have bid your diamonds. So they elected just to uh, bid two clubs and this got passed out. Now here, what I find really interesting is West's bid of one diamond. I think they just completely psyched and bid one diamond. Now, there might be a couple of reasons that they might bid one diamond. And the first is that they're really weak. And uh, when there's such limited bidding, maybe they're thinking that partner might be trying to double and bid again and make a power double where they're trying to show strength and they're trying to save some room for them. Um, but I haven't ever seen this psych of just bidding one diamond, but it jammed Firm out of uh, bidding her diamonds and uh, they just stopped in two clubs. At the other table, went one club, double pass, one spade. And here North bids four no trumps, which just shows a big two suited hand, typically six, five in the minors. And which suit does partner actually wanna play? And they've got four diamonds, so they happily uh, bid two five diamonds. And five diamonds loses to the king of diamonds and it loses um, a heart, but uh, makes relatively comfortably. Um, so two clubs actually made all 13 tricks. Uh, so a rare score of plus 190 at the other table, but interesting bit of one diamond, tricky how you actually handle this one. And then especially when the opponents actually bid your suit. So uh, we'll take a look at all the scores here. So this is one of the swingiest sets I have ever seen. So there were over a hundred imps. There was a hundred and 14 imps swung in this uh, 14 boards. That is just incredibly high imp turnover. Like these one imp boards look so incredibly flat. There's uh, doubled games making, there's redoubled games making, there's doubled slams going for 800. Uh, and just incredibly dis swingy set of boards there. So really, really interesting action throughout that entire set. But Bridge 24 came out ahead uh, by 18 imps. So uh, we'll move into stanza two and now we'll jump over to the seniors. So here we're looking at Penfold versus Vetus. And uh, here it went pass and North opens one club and East has this great eight card heart suit, just gets in there with four hearts and it just goes pass, pass and North makes a reopen double um, and this goes pass and here South's got an interesting choice they've got a four triple three they elected to pass I would imagine most people would be bidding four spades on this hand but they opted to pass four hearts doubled thinking that partner will have to reopen on a lot of hands and jack fourth and uh, just sort of stray cards we've got the ace of clubs but here four hearts is actually uh, making him um, the main thing that they have to do on this hand is they get to rough the club, which really dampens South's uh, defensive potential. And they just try and get over to the West hand and uh, fails the first attempt. Now they go over with the King of Spades and they lead one heart up. And at this stage, when the Ace appears, uh, the Jack third heart won't uh, cause any grief there. So uh, they wrap up 10 tricks. 
At the other table, there was a pretty convoluted option. So it started with one club. They got in there with four hearts, pass, pass, double. And now South did take it out to four spades. Uh, now this goes pass, pass to East who doubles. So here I wanted to delve into what's it mean when a preemptor uh, preempts and then actually doubles again. Now you won't often just have like a penalty double where you've got a stack of the opponent's suit. What most people use a double by a preemptor to mean is like, I've got a good hand and I'm interested in bidding on um, to potentially bid on to five hearts, or if you want, we can actually defend. Um, so that way you don't need to commit and actually bid to five hearts whenever you think and have a guess. You can actually incorporate partners' thoughts uh, into this. So they double here and it goes pass and West are like, well, I have short hearts. I've got some uh, defense here, so let's pass. And North realizing that, well, I've only got three spades. They uh, opted to run. They bid four no trumps and this is where they play. Um, now, here, uh, four no trumps uh, goes down, um, but if they found the cunning lead of a low heart or even a spade over to their partner's hand, they can beat this three tricks, but uh, they made the normal lead of a, a top heart here. And now this jack of hearts presents a second stopper, but four no trumps is still down one. So handy swing um, here to north south. So Penfold were up uh, pretty heavily in the start. Uh, big, big pickup in the first stanza. This second stanza, uh, still quite swingy, like 67 imps is quite a lot, uh, but uh, uh, Penfold is up by uh, 28 imps here at the halfway mark of the semifinals of the seniors. Jumping back over to the mix, here in stanza three, we're looking at Coriandra versus Edmonds. And here we got an interesting one where it went pass, pass, and East opens two clubs precision style, which is uh, 11 to 15 high card points and either six clubs or five clubs and a major. And South bid two diamonds, went pass, and North as a passed hand opted for two hearts and they jumped to four hearts. Now four hearts is relatively straightforward. You're gonna lose one club, one diamond, one spade. Um, and uh, make your contract. At the other table, here I went pass, pass, and they opened one club instead of two clubs. So South bid a diamond, and this went a diamond, pass a heart, and this gave East room to bid a spade. Now, maybe uh, East could have bid two spades in the previous one, uh, but uh, didn't. Um, I think pass was very sensible with the strength that was being shown, but they bid one spade. And here South jump raises to three hearts. And here West only has four points, but they jump all the way to four spades. Now there's a couple of interesting things here, which is firstly, often when people are thinking as a responder, if you've got less than six points, you must pass. That's really like what you should be doing on the first round of the auction. Once you've already done that and partner continues bidding, that gives you a lot of license to, to bid a lot more. So here they've already passed saying they've got a weak hand. So then jumping to four spades when partner continued their auction because they've got a pretty strong hand in the comparison in the range of like zero to five that they've already shown. They have a fifth trump, their king of spades is a well-placed card. But also they should be thinking like, well, if the opponents are going to be bidding to four hearts, which they'll do a lot of the time, do I actually want to then bid four spades over that? Now, if they're gonna sacrifice in four spades anyway, it's better to do it the first time because it's harder for the opponents to judge is this actually a sacrifice or do are they going to be making? Um, now here, four spades doesn't make and uh, it goes down a couple of tricks, um, but North South didn't work out to double this. Now, is it clear if they should double it? If so, who? And here I reckon it's actually Zatorski who probably should double is my thoughts. And the reason for this is the three heart bit. In my mind, it's like, uh, South has shown a pretty decent hand. And as a past hand, you'd be thinking, well, should I be bidding game opposite that? Now, if they were planning on bidding game and the opponents have bid four spades, you don't want to let them play undoubled. Now it's a bit uh, harder with like partner just being an overcall and then a jump and North just having eight points. They might've been thinking I wasn't actually going to bid game. So we'll just leave it there. 
But if they were planning on bidding four hearts, I think they should be planning to double four spades just to get their insurance there. Um, the King Queen fourth club isn't particularly well placed, but they are defensive cards. Partners shown reasonable values. It's not clear that they're expecting to make. My gut feel is that they should be doubling, but it's not by any means clear. Anyway, uh, here, um, nice pickup for the four spades down two, uh, minus 200 versus the 620. We'll jump into the uh, scoreboard. And Coriandra is extending their lead. They're now up 24 imps with one stanza to go. And jumping over to the seniors, final match of the seniors, we are taking a look at Zimmerman versus Goodman. So here we've got an interesting hand of how to deal with some preemption here. So uh, here both tables started with pass, pass, a heart, double, three hearts. So this, this was duplicated at the uh, other table. Here East opted just to bid four diamonds. At the other table, they uh, elected for a takeout double. Partner then said four hearts, I've got some extra values, but not really clear where to go. And they got to five diamonds. So. Five diamonds goes down, uh, can be beaten one trick. Um, at the other table, four diamonds made. Now it is worth noting here that three no trumps can actually make. Uh, you can get five diamond tricks, you can get one heart or one spade, depending on what the opponents do. And if you guess clubs, you can actually get three club tricks. Uh, so three no trumps is a pretty tricky contract to actually uh, navigate to and then a bit of guesswork needed to actually make. Uh, but notice here the preemptive raise just with three high card points, but with the four card support makes it really, really difficult for East West to find uh, the best contract here of three no trumps. But also over the three hearts, what is East meant to do? Do they make a takeout double? Do they just bid their diamonds? Um, now the diamond suit's not great, so I kind of get the idea of the uh, takeout double, but the other issue is you've got king, queen, doubleton, heart, so I'm not totally sure where we're actually expecting partner to navigate to. I reckon if I had two low hearts and there's the chance that partner had the stopper in hearts that like when I double, I want partner to potentially pass, to potentially bid three no trumps or find some good spots. Here, when I've got the heart stoppers, I A, don't see partner passing that often, and B, I don't see partner um, bidding to three no trumps. So yeah, I kind of like the four diamond bid. Um, it is worth noting that uh, if they just pass three hearts, you get two diamond tricks, two club tricks, a heart and a spade, and get a nice plus 300 score. So if partner is to actually choose to pass, uh, which is like a pretty volatile choice looking at uh, this West Hand, uh, it would work out quite well as well. Uh, so here we'll take a final look at here. So in this stanza, uh, Goodman had a great set, uh, picking up uh, 26 imps over Zimmerman uh, to finish quite convincingly. Goodman are through to the final of the seniors. So yeah, Zimmerman uh, went down to Goodman team um, so Goodman are into the final, uh, that's David Berkowitz, Andy Goodman, Mark Laird, Jeff Maxroff, and Mike Parcell. In the other semi-final, uh, Vetus uh, beat Penfold, uh, which is Apollinary, Kowalski, Michael Kuisen, Wojciech, Olansky, Jackek, Romanski, Wolodzimir, Starkowski, Vitaltes, Vanikonis. So they're through to our seniors final, so congratulations to all of them. Uh, over in the mixed, uh, in the quarterfinals, uh, Minita beat uh, Value Media Team, Donna beat Tencha Shesternik, uh, Coriandra beat Edmonds, and uh, Bridge24 went down to Firm. So that's all the action from uh, the mixed and the Seniors World Championships. Come back tomorrow and uh, we'll see you then.